Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to walk through how to use Tapper with SQLite. So to do that, I am going to create a new ASP.NET Core web application and I am going to name it as SQLite Tapper.demo. And I'm going to select API and keep ASP.NET Core 3.1 and create the project. SQLite is a very small, self-contained and highly performant full-fledged SQL engine. It is one of the most widely used SQL engine out there. Now SQLite can be used in memory mode or in a file mode. For this application, I'm just going to use a file and save the data in a file. So for that, I'm going to keep the name of the file in the config file and the name is going to be database name and let's say I'm going to create a database which deals with product so I can name it as product.sqlite. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called database and inside of this folder first thing I'm going to do is create a new class for the database configuration. And I'm going to name the class as database config. Inside of the class, I'm going to keep a single property. And it is going to be the name of the database. Let me get rid of unwanted namespaces. Okay. So the database config dot name will represent this database name here. The next thing I'm going to do is first time when the application starts, we have to ensure that the necessary tables are created. Now we can choose to use migration tools like Fluent Migrator, but I'm going to keep it very simple because the focus of this tutorial is using SQLite with Tepper. So I'm going to keep the database initialization and table creation classes to bare bone minimal and for that I'm going to create a class called database bootstrap and in this class I'm going to have a method called setup and the setup method will have the responsibility of setting up the database. So the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that the table is created and if the table is already created then we don't want to recreate that. So first let's create a connection but before we do that I have to install the necessary NuGet packages. So I'm going to go ahead and install the SQLite NuGet package as well as the Depper. So for SQLite, we are going to use Microsoft.data.sqlite NuGet package. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And then I'm going to install the Depper NuGet package. Okay, once these two are installed, now it's time to configure the database table. For that, I'm going to first create a connection object. And for the connection string, I'm going to give the name of the database. So it will be. And the database name is in the config. So let's inject the config as a part of constructor. And I can get the config. And then here I can just say database config dot name. So this will create the connection string to the SQLite database. The next thing we have to do is we have to do a connection dot execute. And in the execute, we can say create table and let's the table name is product. And then we are going to provide the columns. And let's say we have only two columns. We have the name and the description. Now I'm not going to create any primary key because if we don't pass any primary key by default, SQLite creates a column called row ID, which is unique auto incremented number on the table. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the auto generated row ID. So I'm going to start with name worker of 100 not null and then the next one is description this is also worker but let's keep it as 1000 and null 
So this is going to create the table, but we also have to ensure that the table does not exist before we create it. So what we can do here is we can say var table is equal to connection dot query as a string and we can say select name from SQLite underscore master where type equal to table and name equal to the name that we gave to the table which is product and then what we can do is we can say table name is equal to table dot first or default and then we can say okay if string dot is null or empty so if the table name is not null or empty and table name is equal to product then return otherwise go ahead and create the table now we need to do that because we are creating a as i mentioned file based database so it will be persistent in the file system so on restart the table will still be there okay so now this will do the initial setup let me just extract an interface out of it so we have the database bootstrap set up the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create another folder and i'm going to name it as product master and inside of this folder i'm going to first create the product model and for the product model i'm going to have two properties the string name and the string description So this is the product model. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a product repository class, which is responsible for creating product. And here, first I'm going to have the constructor, which will take the name of the database. So it will have the database config. And then next thing I'm going to have a public async task create and it will take the product as input and then here just like the bootstrap I'm going to create the connection string I'm just going to copy paste this because it's going to be exactly same and then after creating the connection string what I'm going to do is let me just add the namespace after creating the connection string what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a connection dot execute async and here I'm going to send the command which is going to be insert into product name and description and then I'm going to say values and for values I have at the rate name at the rate description and then here I'm going to pass the incoming product as the product and I'm just going to do a await here so this function is going to create a new product in the product database and I'm going to extract an interface so this is my product repository so as you can see I'm just creating SQLite connection the dapper knows how to connect with SQLite database there's absolutely nothing extra I'm doing this execute async works the same way for SQL Server or Postgres or SQLite. It is exact same. The only thing we have difference is how the connection string is configured. That's about it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it as product provider. And as the name suggests, the product provider is responsible for returning the product. And just like before I'll have a constructor inject the configuration and then here I'm going to have public async 
task for i enumerable of product and I'll have a get and I'm just creating a simple get which returns all products and then here it's like this one I'm going to create a connection string and then I'm just going to say return await connection dot query and I'm going to have a query of product and then here I'm going to say select and as I mentioned earlier by default SQLite will create a column called row ID which is an auto incremented integer so I'll say row ID as ID I have to add the ID to product which I forgot so I'm just going to add it now say ID so row ID as ID name description from product so that's all it is doing I'm going to add the namespace for SQLite and I'm going to add the namespace for Depper as well and I have to make it as query async of course okay so once I have that I can extract an interface get rid of the unwanted namespaces. Okay, now we are all set. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to go into the controller and I'm going to create a new API controller and I'm going to create an API controller with read write action and I'm going to name it as product. So it's the product controller and in the constructor of this controller, I'm going to inject I product provider and I product repository. I'm going to declare both of these and the next what I'm going to do is I'm going to update get to return the products so I'll say product provider dot get and since it's an async method I'm going to say await and here I'm going to change it to async task So now this method is async and this one is going to be product. So this is all set. I'm going to get rid of this method because we really don't need it. And also I'm getting rid of the put and delete right now because we are not going to use it. Not in this demo. Okay, next thing for the post, we're going to take a product. And here we're going to change it to async task. And we're going to do a await product repository dot create and we're going to pass the product to it that's about it I get rid of the unwanted namespaces so we're all set with the controller the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the startup and now I'm, I'll have to configure everything so in the startup the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the database config so I'll say add singleton and I'm going to have a new of database config and for the name I'm going to just say configuration of the configuration key which is the database name so this will configure the database config class now I have a video all about how to use configuration what are the different ways of using configuration and I'm going to share the link up there you can take a look into that the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the i database bootstrap and then I'm going to add the product provider and product repository Now all of these are configured. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the configure method a little bit and I'm going to add the I service provider. And then here after everything is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a service provider dot get service and I'm going to get the I database bootstrap service. 
and then I'm going to call the setup on the bootstrap. So this will set up the database with the database table. So now let me change this to run as a console. So one thing I have to do is I have to move this to the same line. So now at this time, everything is configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint in the setup just to show how it works. And if I run this application and if I do an F10, F10, this point in time, there will be nothing in the table. So it'll go ahead and create the table. So this will create the product table. And now if we go and do say API slash product it's empty there is no product there yet because we have not created any so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into postman and in postman i have set up the product post and i'm sending a product hand wash soap and a description for it so let's execute this one we get a 200 pack now if we run the same application we can see the hand wash soap is coming back and as you can see for the id we are getting back one which is in the code nothing but the row id that we created which is automatically generated by the sqlite so this row id so this is how you can create as well as retrieve data from sqlite using dapper and as you can see it is extremely straightforward the way dapper works is exactly same the way it will work for a sql server database or a postgres or any other database the only thing we had to do is add the NuGet package for sqlite and dapper and that's about it so that's all i wanted to cover today and i'm going to upload the source code in my github repo which i'll share in the description and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to it and if you have any other questions or you need me to cover anything else with sqlite and dapper please drop a comment below so that i can cover that and thanks so much for watching this this video.